Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, dogs, and cats, and welcome back to Comdot Level Up. Today we are here again in our Hearts of Iron 4 uh, World Tension series thing. <laughs> welcome back guys, if you remember last time, a lot happened. So, as we can see, the African Entente has been expanding and actually has been invading. Oh shit, there we go, that's that's big too, Slovakia joined the African Entente. Um, I'm not sure, if they're just probably going to get taken over, but... Um, that's another country for the African Entente. The African Entente is ever-growing. It's the only one that's growing right now. They actually have two countries over here in Central America. Um, I think it's Nicaragua and Costa Rica. Costa Rica, Nicaragua, yep, I'm right. Nice. Um, and also they have Kosovo, but Kosovo is not bordering any of the countries that they're fighting. Um, because remember guys, the African Entente is actually not at war with Middle Eastern Coalition, although if they were, that would be pretty crazy. Um, so Slovakia is at war with... These guys, though, was, would be at war with the European Federation. This is all very confusing. Um, last time I was very confused, and you guys helped explain it to me. But basically, the reason why East Turkestan started invading India is because East Turkestan was part of Morocco, or was part of Morocco's, you know, out of faction, African Entente. And they they joined, and then when they were at, became at war with the European Federation, they invaded. Sorry, I'm paused right now. I, I need to continue. So they started invading uh, India, or Indian China, actually. Also, Syrian Union of Nations uh, was somehow pulled into it, I think due to, I uh, can't even remember, I think it was something to do with the, oh, it was something to do with the um, the Russian state being at war with, with Ukraine and then the Ukraine joining European Federation, something like that, and then the, which launched Syrian Union to invade India. And if, guys, the um, Syrian Union does successfully invade India and capitulate India completely, um, that's gonna be huge. That's gonna be really bad for the European Federation. They're not gonna have all of China. They're not gonna have all this stuff. Um, that's gonna be, I think India is gonna be one of the major nations that the, uh, European Federation needs to actually capitulate. So, um, how is Slovakia doing? Slovakia is going to launch a little attack into, uh, Ukraine here, which is actually probably gonna be a thorn in Ukraine's side. I'm sure that, you know, eventually Slovakia is gonna lose, but... Ukraine's fighting a lot, so they, they have to be careful. Their forces are very spread out. They're probably going to start getting pushed back at some point, unless they, you know, unless these guys really start doing some good distraction. Unless something happens, I think um, Ukraine's probably going to get re repulsed, I assume. Um, but let's actually check here. In order for these guys to capitulate, Ireland, India, U.S., Republic of China, and Ukraine all need to capitulate. So Republic of, of China and India are both kind of close. Um, Ukraine... It's looking really strong right now, but, I mean, it is right next to the fighting, and you never know what could happen. Um, Ireland, of course, is pretty safe. They always keep a lot of troops over in Ireland. Whoops, my bad. Um, we can actually check here what they've got over there right now. Yeah, it'd be very hard to take Ireland right now. Um, America's stationing a ton of divisions here. and uh, But you got to remember also, England and the Middle Eastern Coalition control all of England and Wales. Jeez, look at this Scottish invasion force. If they just wanted to, they could totally take England right now. <laughs> And it would be really bad for the Middle Eastern Coalition. The Middle Eastern Coalition, in order for them to capitulate, Turkey, Brazil, Poland, and England. The same four that has kind of always been. But a lot of you guys were saying that if Western Ugandan Raj actually does capitulate India, with the help of actually, you know, East Turkestan, um, attacking India over there in uh, China, that would give them a lot of factories. It's going to make them a lot stronger to attack these guys over here. So we might see a resurgence of um, Western Ugandan strength. You know, they were all the way over here at one point. They've taken all that, but they have just been repulsed. Um, but since they're taking all this stuff with relative ease, I don't think there's any defenses right now. Um, yeah, there's, like, no Indian defense, and I think these guys are on aggressive. Yeah, they are. But I don't think this is the thing. I think these guys are just random random dudes that they're sending in. Um, there's a bunch of units that are surrounded here, but they do have a naval base where they can't escape to. Uh, they are losing that, that assault, but it's probably not going to be that, that way for long. Delhi is um, open to an invasion too. I think there's a couple of volunteers, Japanese volunteers there, that could take Delhi or could defend Delhi. Oh shit, look. They've actually pushed up a little bit. Or or not, they're being repulsed, I can't tell. There's nothing defending it here though. Yeah, it's just going to be retaken right back. The fighting is still happening down here in uh, Africa as well. Um, Uganda and Yitria, or Eritrea? Eritrea, I'm pretty sure. I've been saying it wrong the whole time. You, like, just like every other country have been saying it wrong. Eritrea, I'm pretty sure that's how it is. So Eritrea and Uganda fighting together. Um, and if I say Yitria, just just know I mean Eritrea. Because I'll probably say it on accident. Jeez. 
Equatorial Guinea controls a bunch of this territory, actually, now that I realize it. So this territory that Equatorial Guinea controls is actually all um, controlled by the Syrian Union because I forgot that Equatorial Guinea is part of their faction, the faction leader, in fact. So they, they, they demanded some land, it looks like. How are the Ukrainians doing? They're not doing the best. I think if, you know, Hungary actually assaulted their troops forward, um, they would, the Ukrainians would definitely lose, but they're just holding right now. They're not actually attacking. And Slovakia is almost cutting a bunch of Ukrainians off, which would be really bad if they did that, uh, for the Ukrainians, actually. Um, but I don't know how long Slovakia can hold on. They're the only country in their faction, you know, surrounded by others that are not in their faction, so I don't think they're going to get very, very good supply. Um, but you never know. These Ukrainians might, might kill them, or, you know, they might actually cut them off, capture a city or two. And uh, do really good, so we, we never really know. Also, the Ukrainian assault in Poland doing surprisingly well. They're outnumbered, I think. Poland, I'm pretty sure, has a lot more troops um, on the border. They've got, I don't know, maybe like 30 on the border. And the Ukrainians, what do you guys have? You guys probably, actually, probably roughly the same. A little bit, maybe a little less. I don't know. But they still have Warsaw. And the Polish aren't assaulting forward. They've actually gone over here and take taking this this town I'm not gonna pronounce not even gonna attempt uh lods i mean maybe it's just lods i don't know but i don't know what all those little little accent markers mean <laughs> shit remember guys the soviet fleet in the black sea is giving um the ukrainians a really hard time i don't know where they're docking their ships it's gotta be said i don't i don't know where or how they're docking their ships here but the ukrainians are keeping their fleet right here um and it's or, I mean, the, the Middle Eastern... No, sorry, the Soviet Union is keeping their fleet there. I don't know how how, that, how they're doing that. Also, um, over here, the Middle Eastern Coalition, remember, has all this territory that they've captured when they were fighting the Russian state. And this is a problem for Ukraine. They have to repulse them out of here, too. And I think they aren't necessarily repulsing them, but they're not losing territory right now. Um, that might not be the same for the Soviet Union. I don't know what the Soviet Union's doing or how well they're pushing, but... Um, we, we'll, I guess, I guess we'll have to wait and see. These guys have pushed down here, definitely. This, this was a, a break by the Soviets, but I don't know how much that's going to affect them. If that's going to even give them anything, it's probably just going to make it harder on their troops to, to fit in this little noodle. Also, guys, another thing you guys were bringing up, um, is there a way I can turn up the, um, speed? No, there's not actually. This is on full speed. Um, the reason it's going kind of slow is just because there's so much going on in the game. And uh, it's impossible for the game to, you know, run this entire thing that's happening here at the fastest speed that Speed 5 would have been. Right now it's running at like a Speed 4 or 3. Like how a Speed 4 or 3 would normally be. But um, we're going to have to put push through it, guys, if we want to see the end. Also, I just wanted to point out that Benin was given to Morocco. Just for, from Togo. Just because just cause they're good friends. And I think Ghana is being kept alive by Democratic Republic of the Congo volunteers. They're not in a faction, right? They are not in a faction. So the volunteers from the Democratic Republic of Congo are keeping um, are keeping Ghana alive for as long as they can from Togo's assault. And actually, Morocco is keeping um, Monaco alive. Monaco. Monaco. <laughs> They're keeping Monaco alive by giving them volunteers and stuff. Morocco. Morocco's troops are assaulting... Wait, where are Morocco's troops assaulting this way? Maybe they switched. Maybe maybe Morocco's troops hold Nice, but the European Federation has taken Monaco. Something weird is happening here. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Also, um, looks like the Europeans have recaptured Stuttgart. Uh, this was all cap recaptured by the Austrians through here. But it looks like there's been some reinforcements. There's some Americans here. Um, yeah, and actually they're pushing into Austria again. Um, there's more troops here than there was. There used to only be, like, Basque County sh stuff and, and, uh, Catalonians, but now there's more. There's, there's actual troops. And look at this defense. Look at this, uh, Middle Eastern Coalition defense. There's, like, nothing here. That's actually pretty scary for them. They've got a couple Austrians. A, oh, Canadians moving through. Mostly just a couple Austrians, actually. There's a Californian and a Lithuanian. Um, oh, there's a Czech over there, another Lithuanian, another Californian. But there's not much. The Europeans definitely, uh, you know, out outgun them right here. And it might not be long bef before, you know, this front for the Middle Eastern 
coalition again collapses, kind of like the one that happened down here. Oh shit, would you look at that? Slovakia. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> You're doing really good, actually. Slovakia is... Oh, they're pushing all the way out here, too. They've captured this from Morocco. Is Morocco the leader of the... Of the Asian Entente? It is. Or, I mean, the African, African Entente. African Entente leader is Morocco, by the way, so just to point that out. Um, but yeah, Slovakia, doing really good. Unsuspecting Ukrainians are having a really hard time dealing with that. Slovakia had a little bit of an army built up, and uh, they, they did good. They definitely did good. The Syrian Union has reached the uh, east coast of India and have reached uh, a border with the um, East Turkestan troops from the African Entente. They're going to have to figure out where the border is going to be, but I guess they're each occupying territory, so they'll figure out the borders later. Looks like East Turkestan has reached, um, like, the easternmost part of India first, and also Bangladesh. So they're probably going to be controlling Bangladesh, or most of it. Um, the, the Pakistani troops are on their way. They're going to capture pretty much all of India if they keep, keep this up. And they're going to capture all the way down to the south, all the way up here to Nepal. We might see East Turkestan, though, keep capturing the border with Nepal. I don't know. Oh shit, big break actually for the Middle Eastern Coalition. I think I might have seen where all their troops have gone. They've left this border pretty much unprotected at, at this point. But they've gone down here to assault the Syrian Union of Nations. Quite harshly actually, they've pushed all the way down into southern South Sudan or South Sudan now. Uganda's having a hard time. Um, they've actually reached the border of military Yitria. This is not looking good for Syrian Union guys. Not looking good. But um, I don't think they're going to capitulate because... They would need, I think, Ugandan Raj to capitulate. I think they would need... I mean, they would definitely need Equatorial Guinea to capitulate. I'm not sure if they would need any others, though. Um, let's see, actually. Russian state. They would need only Equatorial Guinea. Russian state was actually the other major country. So, if Uganda falls, I don't think Ugandan Western Raj or Western Ugandan Raj will fall, but um, it will definitely put a dent in their in their attack. Um, and actually, looks like... Actually, no. They, they've pushed in a little bit. The Middle Eastern Coalition has pushed in a couple provinces. I thought they've taken this whole state, but no, they haven't. So they're, they still haven't reached into original Pakistan yet, but they're slowly pushing forward. And that's a little bit scary for you, Pakistan. You you gotta, you gotta should wrap up India quick and then, and then head on back. Back in the Ukraine, um, the Ukraine is actually uh, running wildly through Romania right now. I don't know what happened. I don't know why these guys are still lined up here like a bunch of idiots. Um, but uh, the, Iran the Romanian line has decided to break. Why are they putting all these troops over here for no reason? There's like tons of troops just hanging out. I guess they're guarding the ports so they don't get navally invaded. That's kind of a good idea, but I think maybe you could use some of those troops out here. So if you're rooting for, you know, Ukraine, good news. They've taken another town in Romania and they are um, breaking through the Romanian line. I think Romania had to pull a bunch of troops off or something to go assault down here or to go assault over here because this is becoming more of a priority for them, I can tell. And this as well. Um, but they're they're kind of leaving Europe behind. I think the European, or I mean the Middle Eastern Coalition might be actually ended, end up leaving Europe and actually focusing other areas. That might be a big deal um, if they do that. Also, Poland has retaken Lodz from Ukraine. There's a lot of undefended uh, positions here in uh, Ukrainian-held Poland. I think it's a lot of it's due to this Slovakian attack, which Slovakia has actually pretty much doubled their territory since this happened. So Slovakia is doing a lot of good right now for the Middle Eastern Coalition, even though they are in the uh, African Entente. Bucharest is uh, open to attack right now by the Ukrainians. There's nothing defending it. So if this guy wanted to, all you'd have to do is just walk right in. I think there's a couple guys down here, though. Um, oh, yeah, and these guys are running to defend the, the points now. But they just had... Oh, man, and they've captured pretty much the whole coast, or half the coast at this point. I think Romania is going to collapse. If Romania collapses, that's definitely huge for them, or definitely huge for Ukraine. That's one down, and they can actually focus Slovakia more. They could actually run in and take out uh, Hungary, because Hungary is in the faction. Sl slowly move through this way. They can't go hit um, Turkey through a ground attack, but they could la launch this naval invasion onto Turkey and, I mean, do a huge amount of damage. They would totally be unsuspecting. It would have to create a new front for them. 
they, they would not be ready for that. So yeah, Romania has broken, broken but uh, Poland is looking like it's lost. So the uh, Ukrainians are slowly retreating out of Poland. They've lost Warsaw. So Warsaw is again lost. They've Polish, the Polish have recaptured their capital. Um, so not good, I guess, if you're rooting for, you know, Ukraine over there, but this is looking really good. You should be, you should be really happy for this. Um, I don't know what this means up here, but I think this just means that they're focusing down here a lot more. I think they're seeing that there's a victory down here, and they're trying to assure that they get at least one of the victories instead of just two stalemates. Oh, look. Um, the Americans and Slovenia have landed in Slovenia and are, are recapturing. They've recaptured one little spot. Um, I'm sh not sure they're going to hold it. Probably, I assume they're not. Oh, wait, look. Oh, I see what happened. They didn't land there. They drove there. Look, they've driven all the way through Austria. And this is... Wow, that's bad for Austria. And look, the they're on the assault up here, too. Well, the fighting stopped, but... They're on the assault up here, too. They're almost at Frankfurt again. In fact, actually, the Middle Eastern Coalition are, are, the, one that's, are the ones that are assaulting. But, um... Go back over here. This is cool. This is good. They could actually march through the rest of Austria, too, and actually attack them. So we don't know how that's going to affect um, their their fighting ability, but I don't, I'm don't. i not even sure if they're going to even go for Austria just because they're dumb. Actually, look. They have moved up one one province here. So Austria might... We might see a dead Austria semi-soon. Unless they can... If they can get more troops through here, um, then Austria might not have a bright future. Shit. Okay, Ukrainians have just taken... Bucharest, so that's gonna be big on the um, on the Romanians. That's gonna be hard on their supply, um, especially if they take yeah, if they take that one right there. That's gonna split these guys into two little groups here. These guys are gonna be surrounded on the coast, and these guys are gonna be surrounded here. I don't think the slow the uh, I don't think the Soviet Union is at war with Romania, just because I don't think those factions are at war. But if they were, that would be really bad because the Soviet Union has this entire sea covered, um, and no one would be able to escape that. Oh my god, look. Oh my god, I almost said that. Really weird. Look at all these Americans here. Look at all these Europeans. They're they're doing it. <laughs> they're actually doing it, like I said. Get, this is the way to win. You gotta march through Austria. Look, they're actually doing it. They're actually doing it. Holy shit. I just, I just burped a little bit there. I'm sorry. That probably sounded really weird and awkward. Now I'm making my comments. Come on, can you just walk into that one province? Oh, oh my god, look, they did it. They're walking to another province. Are they gonna go all the way to Salzburg? If they go all the way to Salzburg, that's not good for Austria. That's not good for you, Austria. Austria, do you have any defenses coming? Do you have anybody coming to defend you? Oh, you, you went you went to Aus or next to Salzburg, but you didn't go to it. You just wanted to surround this one Austrian. That's actually a good idea. You should send one guy into Salzburg, though. You're, you're there. You can take it. Come on. Do it. Okay. Also, by the way, uh, Ukraine has capitulated. So, um... The, or not Ukraine, sorry, Romania is capitulated. So, uh, Ukraine has full control over all of Romania's, uh, factories and stuff. And now, um, we'll see how they do with, deal with that. Let's actually check. Ukraine, what are your armies like down here now? Okay, they're protecting a lot of the victory points they've captured, and they are trying to assault into, um, Hungary. So, oh man, this is actually not looking good for European Federation, or I mean, Middle Eastern Coalition right now. They've got a troop surrounded there. Salzburg has been captured by the Americans. Actually, Cubans and Greeks. Good job. Or is that even Greek? What is that one? Quebec. Oh, yeah, Quebec. That was, that was close to Greek, I thought, for a second. Um, yeah, Quebec. Good job, Quebec. A lot of Americans. Actually, look. There's a um, English naval invasion. That's not going to go anywhere, though. But anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. If you liked this episode, make sure to leave a like, favorite, and subscribe if you are new. Make sure to write who you think is going to win in the description. Or, I mean, in the, if you could edit the description. No, you can't. In, in the comments. Um, if you make place your bets, if you think the African Entente is going to come out on top somehow. They they did um, make a big surprise last episode. If you think the Syrian Union is going to hold out, get really strong um, after capturing, you know, India and stuff. And then be able to defeat the Middle Eastern Coalition. If you think the European Federation is now um, the strongest due to what, you know... The Ukraine is doing and the capturing of Romania and the push into Hungary. Make sure to let me know in the comments, guys. Thank you very much for watching again, and I'll see you guys all next time. Peace.